action. Hey folks, Greg Koch here. Uh, we're the uh, Rambling Wildwooders here at NAM 2017. I'm with the glorious individual known as Dale Wilson from the Fender Custom Shop. Master builder extraordinaire. It was a pleasure builder. of hanging out with you uh, a couple of months back when you came out to the Wildwood yeah. environs for a little uh, clinic activity. That was incredible. That was a great road show. That was good, yeah. clean fun. And here incredible. we are again yeah. to discuss perhaps some of your offerings for this next year a coming. And we just saw that quite strap. a few actually. Would you uh, would you give us uh, a little guided tour of this Savage? Uh, this is a really heavy relic strap that I did. Uh, kind of an ultra relic. Uh, I kind of mixed a lot of different um, of my favorite guitars. Some on Instagram and some uh, famous guitars like a Rory, a Stevie. Um, I kind of, uh, there's uh, Philip Zayas has a guitar called Mother. I really like that a lot. So I just wanted to expose a lot of wood and make it look uh, quite loved and beat up yes. at the same time. So, yeah. I'll tell you what, that looks... Uh... That looks legitimately abused. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's got some beatings to it, that's for sure. You know, uh, it's uh, got a nice uh, uh, quarter sawn uh, uh, neck with a dark rosewood board. Kind of uh, aged the uh, the like fretboard to where it looks more turning. You know, the turning red, or on the verge of turning red. Um, Hugh, Tone kinda, Hugh. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. You know so what's it's interesting? Just, Even though the the answer is logical enough, but oftentimes, as, as a matter of fact, not too uh, not too long ago, someone commented because uh, I always say that relic guitars sound different from gloss guitars just simply by the fact of, of how they're made and that there's less stuff yeah, in yeah. terms of finish and so on and so forth. And I was castigated with great vehemence by this cyber individual who should and will remain anonymous because it was some kind of fictitious name. But be that as it may, uh, when people talk about relics, they get, they get, they don't, a lot of people don't understand it. I understand it because they sound different, but also yeah. it gives you the feeling and um, vibe, if you will, that the word that's overused to the max, but of having totally. one of these old iconic instruments without actually having that's to pay, say, you know, fifty thousand dollars or whatever. See, that's that's how I look at it. Right? I look at it as uh, somebody who doesn't who doesn't have you know fifty thousand dollars or whatever to spend on an old vintage instrument, and but they want the look and they want the feel. Uh, they want the legitimate feel and look of it of it, and and the sound. I think it sounds different right? too. It's less finish, you know, more. More wood exposed, uh, the feeling of the neck and the back, you know. The, well, as I as I tell folks, not that I, you know, the end all of knowing what things sound like, but when I'm in that chair in the Wildwood Lair and we're playing yeah, guitar yeah. after guitar after guitar after guitar, that's when I really came to the realization of well, they sound different. I mean, they sound a little bit more yeah. open, they're dynamic. They really do. They're, they're a little, I mean, that's not to say the gloss guitars aren't cool for what they do yeah. in terms of. Uh, I love them all. I love Nos, uh, Closet yeah. Classic, the Journeyman. I love. Uh, you know, relics, heavy relics. I, I love them all. I love. Uh, I I do think that a a relic guitar sounds a little bit more open, a little, yeah. little you know. Um, so we're not through, high on crack because I, I I don't think so. I, I mean, but it, it's a personal taste, and that's why we do all the different finish and uh, the different treatments that we do. It's right. because everybody has their own their own uh, way of playing and their own. You know, Maybe the thing to say is, vibe. if you're skeptical, try it out. Yeah, definitely. try out the different iterations definitely. of. Uh, of relicking and non-relicking, and you'll go, hey, I like this, I don't like that, but there is a difference. Yeah. That's all we're gonna say. Uh, That's all we're saying. Yeah. yeah. Right? We have them all. We make them all. Would you be so kind as to show us another one of your glorious creations for OT17? Uh, How about this checkerboard beast right behind you? Yeah. That's a cool one. So this is a, a, a checkerboard sparkle. It's a stratosphere blue sparkle. Uh, it has a beautiful bird's eye neck. I mean, that thing's just crazy beautiful. Wow. That looks like a rather substantive neck as far as girth is concerned. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yes. Kind of a large C type thing going there. Yes. That's beautiful. A couple strap pickups. I kind of, not my favorite uh, configuration on Telecasters, but uh, with it being all black, it kind of, yeah. you know, fades in. So I, I, I like that. Five way toggle switch? Uh, there, uh, uh, yeah, it's five way toggle switch. And uh, what's this, a grease bucket, and uh, 
and just a volume. What are you calling this color here? Uh, Stratosphere Sparkle. I love it, man. It's beautiful. So Offset it's, against it's, that little, the binding. Yeah, is. yeah, yeah, definitely. And it really catches the light well. You know, it's like a really, really, really beautiful kind of a, got the contour going, but it's a really beautiful uh, sparkle. You know? yeah, I like it a lot. The, uh, the abdominal accommodator. <laughs> yeah, we all need those. <laughs> anyway, that's that one. That's beautiful. Yeah. And again, these are all available uh, in quantities as much as people order them? Yeah, yeah. As much as, if you want them, we'll build them. If you build it, they will come, it's or vice versa. This one, this is hollow. It's roasted, uh, roasted alder with a little bit of figure. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's oh, got yeah. a little bit a little bit of figure going on it. Describe the roasting process. Uh, they they put it in an oven and they uh, suck out all the air and heat it up and that's how it does not burn, but it does caramelize the you know the wood. Is lunch and also it, prepared for the custom shop employees <laughs> in the same oven? That's right. Well, we don't do it. It's it's a it's a third party vendor that does it and. Um, and you can roast it, you can over roast it to where it'll become brittle, but if it's not over roasted, it actually stabilizes the wood, and this is hollow, and if I was to leave this top off, it would stay flat. On a regular alder body, if I was to hollow this out, it would actually start to potato chip and start to, you know, kind of get a concave thing going there. Uh. And so the ro roasting process, people, you know, a lot of people think it, 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 it helps or it doesn't. I totally think it does. I think it helps the tone. I think it helps the, the stability. And I like it. I like, I like the way it looks. I mean, look at the neck. The neck is sublime. It's just beautiful flame neck, just crazy. It just pops with the, the carameling of the of And that's the, also the roasted. That's yes. Yes. So that's beautiful. kind of a different look. I kind of just... Made it as simple as I possibly could, just to you know sure. show off the top. But yeah, not for everybody. But you know, beauteous. Yeah, I do love Esquires. Uh, one pickup. Yeah, yeah. Can get the job. I've heard done. you on an Esquire. It's pretty, uh, pretty incredible. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Yeah. I do enjoy the Esquire. It is yeah. a tool of sonic reckoning. <laughs> yeah, in your hands, anything is. Well, actually. bless your twisted heart. Uh, let me ask you this, is there anything else in this immediate proximity? Was there, how about that sparkly strat? Yeah, this is like a... So this is kind of like a, a champagne look. I call it ginger sparkle, kind of aged champagne type thing. That's beautiful. But it just, Woo! is that crazy? So this is like a silver and a copper flake together. And that's why you kind of, you're kind of getting the silver, but and the spark and the, the silver and the cop, copper, but it kind of gives it a, a pink hue to it, you know. I like this too. Is it? And then, yeah, the, the bird's eye is just off the hook, just dripping. Now, although we've discussed this before, could you describe for the listeners out there in Inter Google Land, uh, when you say master built versus team built, what all do you do like spe on this specific guitar? What what does Dale Wilson all do on this? Um, I do everything. I, we have helpers, we have apprentices, and so I use them just so we could get more out to the customers. Right. But um, I do everything that I possibly can, whether it's uh, shaping the necks, uh, uh, routing the bodies. You know, the bodies are, we have a CNC, so they do the perimeters. We'll do, uh, we'll do anything that adds uh, comfort, uh, anything that uh, adds character to the, to the necks and to the bodies. Um, but anything that we want to be precise and over and over again, we'll use uh, CNCs on. So, so basically, I've wound pickups. Uh, you know, all the relicking, obviously. You right. know, all the the woodworking. So, yeah, it's fantastic. And so, what year of a Strat is that based on? Per uh, this is going to be an early '60s. Got it. Like a, uh, this just says 1960s, but it's. Uh, it's probably like 60, 61. And know, now does this like have that. a flatter radius and taller frets? Is that kind of an approach, or did you go for more of a vintage? Uh, this is, I believe this is a nine and a half inch, okay. and it's got the uh, 155s, I believe, yeah. Uh, okay. It's a Stumac fret wire that's kind of like a vintage width, but it's uh, almost the height of a 6105. So do you find that most of the stuff you guys are making in the custom shop now has got more of a modern 
feel in terms of radius and frets? Or yeah. What do you say proportion wise? People so. want a flatter radius, but they and they want a high fret, but they want it to be uh, still look like a vintage guitar. Right. right? So. Right. And I like that too. Yeah. yeah. I like the comp. I like a compound uh, seven and a quarter to nine and a half. Yeah, that's cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. You know? Because you get your bends and uh, it's still comfy down here to play. So every now and again, I'll play a, play a seven and a quarter, and there's vibratos are pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. With that, yeah, that's you, for sure. You got to be aware of you know bottoming out here and there, but yeah. a compound's kind of the, the best of both worlds. Most definitely. But cool. hopefully this does well at the show. We'll see. We'll see. What else we got? Uh, this is a Pamelina that I did. That Pamelina and I did. Pamelina. And this is again another roasted with uh, kind of a figured, figured ash, and then a beautiful uh, satin uh, roasted uh, maple neck. Where did this and idea of roasting her, come from? Is that something that had been done for a while? And... You know, I haven't the slightest idea. I just I remember seeing it uh, online, and I was like, oh my gosh, that would be so so cool on a guitar. It was uh, there was a couple companies uh, doing it, and I I caught it and just started using it we all did you know and uh i'm not really quite sure you know that's a beautiful specimen there yeah, i've kind of got the maple skunk stripe or the uh you know the unroasted maple skunk stripe right so and so this is painted on there yeah and then we just uh lacquered over it just slightly just to protect it but pat molina has been with us for so long and this is our 30th anniversary so you know what better artist to uh to uh, to exhibit out here, you know. I think I smell a little roasting. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. You it's smell a, the roasted wood, smell. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so yeah, that's a couple. Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sure spending enough. some time with us and showing yeah. us some of these glorious weapons. We appreciate it as always. My pleasure. My and pleasure. There is ravenous interest in your in your weaponry. Oh, they come good. into the wild wood and they go out. That's awesome. It's great yeah. to hear. Yeah, Great to sure. see you as always, my Great friend. Great to see you too. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Gregory Cockery here for our friends at Wildwood Guitars at NAMM 2017 in the Fender Lair. We'll see you later.